and welcome back to Late Night Gunpla with Talon Omega. Um, today we are continuing the build on the PMX-03 Master Grade, the O by Bandai Hobby. Um, so far we have done the actual helmet part, the side skirts, the rear skirt, and the rear um, the backpack. Uh, today gonna continue going um, I'm not sure where I want to go today actually you know what I think I will start on the shoulders and so I think we'll do the kind of shoulder armor first um, so left side first and then um, yeah let's just take them both off I'll probably do both shoulders today um, and the arms maybe next week we'll see how that develops um, yeah you know, we've been building this guy for the past couple of weeks now. Uh, finishing him up, actually. I had started him a couple of years ago, finishing him up right now. So, yeah, we'll start in on the shoulders today and see who shows up. All right. So, um, yeah, let's go top view. I prefer top view on these while I'm at it. Actually, I got to focus. It looks about right. We'll see. Um, ah, yes. Today's music on my headphones. I don't play any music on the stream, but I have them playing on my headphones. Is Mashup Disco Funky House 2002, 2022, Never Dull, Katy Perry C, Harris, Chic, Swedish House Mafia by Albert C.T. So just kind of playing it through the headphones. You just all have to deal with my kind of voice. So. Uh, I don't want the gain's really high. Let me bring that down a bit. Um, I don't want too much of the background noise coming through as well. I know there's a lot of stuff going on. Hopefully, all right. Hopefully, my internet doesn't go as bad as it was yesterday. I dropped a couple of times. Hopefully not. Um, noticed today that it was a little low before stream started, and I had um, stood up my antenna again. I've been meaning to get some. Um, get it wired instead of Wi-Fi um, but that takes time that takes uh, getting under the house to run the wires uh, running the wires through the walls a lot of stuff that I don't feel comfortable quite doing yet but we'll see when I get around to it um, so yeah that's the idea today so um, yeah as I said last time the tools for the stream um, are slightly different so we got my exacto knife that I found my knife pile um, pair of kind of scissors to just kind of cut the decals particularly the robot decals uh, burnishing tool that came with a kind of um, little uh, Sengoku SD uh, Gundam series kind of tool set that a friend of mine gifted me a couple years ago so came it comes with the burnisher, the needle nose pliers that I'm also using, um, the nippers, and a kind of part separator. So um, that's today. Um, the pens that I will be using, uh, as I started yesterday, I started using the Gundam Marker Fine Tip Pen uh, GM01. Um, actually, no, that I think that's the price, 200 yen. So yeah, the GM01 Fine Print. Um, I also have the Gundam Marker GM20. Uh, this is more felt tip, uh, so I think this one's going to be more for kind of, I think I did that on the beam sabers where I just kind of let the capillary action take it in. And I have the Copic Point O five. 5 um, hopefully it does look like the tip is still good, so um, it might be a little smaller. Let me try to eyeball it because I think it does. Yeah, it does look a little finer, so I'll have to see if it fits in pieces that the Gundam marker doesn't, but I mean, it's the official Gundam for an official Gundam kit, so hopefully it should work out that way. All right, uh, viewer, thank you for joining. Feel free to comment, feel free to lurk. You don't have to entertain me. I do like roughing off of people while we're talking, though, but, you know, do what you will. Uh, so, as I said today, we're starting in on the, um, on the shoulder pieces. The shoulder armors so now I have to decide which sides are going to be front which sides are going to be back because they are identical 
So which side is going to be left, which one's going to be right, which side is going to be front, which side is going to be back. I think I will start in as, you know, let's just keep them this orientation. Uh, the stickers are lined up here. Ooh. Wait, is it really? I'm going to use, oh shoot, IJ, IJ. So yeah, there will be some of the robots on these as well. We'll have to see how that works out. So let's just get into it. Um, yes, we'll see if I can do it just by eyeballing it right now. So we'll start with um, left side. So we'll call this side left. So 39. There's 39. Here we go. Here's uh, another bit of mistake here. Hopefully that sticks. So I will do panel lining first. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, CSI Krios. <laughs> Thank you guys for that. Um, yeah. All right. I was about to make the mistake of start putting in the... Uh, decals first and um, you know before this but because I'm gonna be rubbing off some of the paint I don't want it to get caught up on the stickers as I'm pulling it off so just gonna do it that way right now hmm. yep uh, thinking on it I think I do have some of the Tamiya panel accent I'm a Tamiya guy I will admit to that I have primarily been using Tamiya's when I have painted stuff so yes I am uh, kind of loyal to that brand right now they haven't uh, kind of treated me wrong so far but I have kind of thought about looking at the Creos or the Misters um, for a while I just haven't gotten around to kind of pulling the trigger on that. Hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I might have it the Mr. Tamiya panel accent, but I think the one I have is in gray, maybe? I haven't gotten around to really using it much. Um, uh, the panel line is actually on a seam line, so we'll see how that plays out. This one Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd have, I have some testers enamels. Um, th those were the original ones I started with, so those paints are now about thirty years old. Yeah, I could probably toss those out now that I think about that, instead of just keeping them. Um, yeah, I have some t old testers from when I first built my first um, kind of model, which was a model car. Um, way back when if you just saw me do the math <laughs> so yeah way back when um, and so yeah that uh, that tool that uh, paint kit from testers picked up um, those were acrylics I think I did wind up using some of those acrylics for some Gundam or another Oh. 
I've heard kind of good things about Molotow. I'm tempted by Molotow uh, because I want to see how their, uh, I think I've heard good things about their Chrome pen and I'm kind of intrigued by it. All right, yeah, that one's not really. Yeah, I'm doing that so badly. Left like that, then uh, any other? Well, there's these guys hidden pieces. I'll do them anyway. I don't know why I'm getting so kind of completionist on this kit. Probably would have skipped these on most other things I've built. One, yeah. Um, bases. Well, um, again, I've got the the um, the Tamiya base, um, base in black, and I think I might have a base black in testers as well. Um, but yeah, I think I had the spray cans of the gray base um, when I've used them can I use them on gray paint uh, well again the last thing I was painting um, which was the what was that building what was it was it uh, uh, the, what is that called it was the one from build fighters um, the transformer one, not, not transformer, um, but it was the combiner one, uh, try on Z. Um, I built, I've been working on that one for a while. That's been in progress for quite some time because, um, I started painting it and I started wanting to paint it in metallics. So... I did so far I've got the yellows turned into gold and that's where I stopped because that's when the spore was born and so I haven't gotten back around to finishing it um, partly was you know didn't want to be spraying that with the young child in the apartment um, so that's why I kind of held off on doing it um, since then, I haven't been really done much with that. I pulled it out uh, when we moved, and so it's just covered in dust. So I'd have to like dust it first, make sure it's completely cleared off, and then try to um, try to get the um, try to get the paint done again. Uh, I think what I had done there, what I had done so far was, um, I had, yeah, I painted the gold. I had kind of done a three layer paint on it. So, um, did a base black and then covered it with metallic and I was hitting it all with, um, with clear colors um, so I was hitting the gold with clear yellow had to do it like two or three <laughs> yes it makes it yeah I tried to do the candy effect and that's where I left off actually let me see if I've got an image of it that I can bring up try to find it and if there's a way that I can show it on screen Okay, so actually, let me see if I had it. Come on, no, it's 
sometime soon. So, ah yes, if you go down uh, to projects, you see the uh, started project um, or in progress, the started pile at the top of the pile is what I've got done so far. I don't have any close-up shots of it. that one let's look at your work yeah. Ooh, that is really good work that's what I'm hoping to get the reds when I get around to doing them look like so like I said that's why I say I'm a bit of a um, kind of journeyman gunpla builder um, I know the techniques I know the theory uh, I don't have the practical knowledge, which is part of the issue there. Okay, I think I will redo these as well, because it does pop out a bit at least, if I at least line them. Even if it's just kind of pops it out a bit, which should be enough. Yeah, I don't have any close-up shots on this computer uh, right now yeah that's what I've been doing airbrushing which is also why I hadn't wanted to do any more with the spore in the house because you know I was kind of worried about all that flying around in the air even though I was going to be doing it outside still wanted to kind of be safe about that now I'm in not an apartment anymore so we'll see how that plays out. Oy. All right, and now burnishing. So yeah, as I said yesterday, I think I will wind up uh, top coating this um, my preferred uh, top coating technique is uh, the pledge um, yeah oh God, what was it called um, it was a floor polish and so I did manage to find the floor polish somewhere apparently so apparently that was only sold at a, at a local Walmart so I had to go find the closest Walmart that had it and go pick it up there and so that's what I wound up doing and 23 are the only ones there. Okay. 23 is there. yeah the wax was fun most of my kids have been finishing that um, although again the the Tamiya um, airbrush kind of top coats I've used that as well on a couple of them one on this side okay so I need one on this side I'm gonna go down here
It's a little off center. Oh well. Yeah, no, I just think those are it. Hmm. That just still kind of scares me also. Um, no, it doesn't quite scare me. Well, the idea of brushing it, airbrushing it, is kind of scary in its right. So that's why I haven't really done much lacquer. Um, again, most I've done is enamel and, um, and acrylic. Um, think yeah no uh, let me. Oh, my. oh don't keep all right I don't know if it is oh come on Revive. Is that your one? Cause yeah, it was um, Future Wax is what it used to be called. Um, Future got bought out by some other by Pledge, I believe, and so yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, good for them. You know, sometimes, you know, you go cheap and it works for you. I mean, that's how I got most of, um, a lot of my kind of tools. Um, yeah, the buffing sticks I use, these I buy from Daiso, which kind of reminds me I probably should need to, need to do a Daiso run again because, wow, this one's really bad. Uh, this is the one I was using to build most of this one, so... Yeah, probably time for me to make another Daiso run for that. But yeah, I mean, I do that. <laughs> Never kids too much. All right, all right. I mean, this is a hobby of love, so I'll, I'll grant you that. I'll give you that one. 40, 40. Yeah, I mean, this is a labor of love hobby. You can't do something for this long with this much detail if it's not for love. So, yeah. And, you know, like you said, it's all personal preference. Love, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that. Okay, so now I and J... Trying not to press too much on anything either. Actually, scissors. Ugh. I don't want to rub off too much.
<laughs> Let's try to be careful with this. On a faz? <laughs> that would be overkill, all right. Gold, silver, and copper foil on faz. Yeah, I mean, I did gold, um, gold paint on the first kit that I painted. <laughs> Shoot. Um, okay, that's... Yeah, that's the glossy side. Okay. The problem with dropping these is that you forget which side's top. But, um, so yeah. The new Gundams. Uh, no, not the, the news. The Mushas. The Shin Mushas. I want to. Um, again, the Shin Musha that I have built, uh, I think if you see on the display as well, I think I have it on there. I have the built pile. Yeah, on the build pie, it's kind of right in the middle of the picture and the profile information. Um, that one, the golds, uh, that was all kind of uh, brushed on. And the uh, metallic reds on that one were um, Gundam Marker. Um, Sengoku no Jin. Which one's that one? Sengoku no Jin. Which one is that one? Oh, okay. Yes, I have that one as well. And that one, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I want to get the Stuart Semple um, Blackest Black 3.0 and do the black armor parts in that. Um, I think the, the reds on that one. But yeah, the um, the black Sengoku no Jin has the um, has the metallic red kind of piping. Um, so from what I remember of building the first one was oh wait, what the heck? Okay, were you here? I believe. This plays out. Yeah, I should probably be using the burnishing tool, but my nail's good. Anyway, so yeah, thinking of doing the darker than the blackest black for the armor parts. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so that, something like that is what I want to do with the black robe. Um, yeah, I have that one. I also recently was able to put in the order for the, um, Ieyasu version as well. So, got that one coming in. Um, I also have the, ooh, you are a little off. I also got the Musha Gundam. Um, the black one. That's another one that I've been holding off on doing for a while. Ish. Alright, I'll have to make do. Put it too high up. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, 
this tape? Probably. Let's see how this works out. See what it is. Oh, so this is for a death scythe, it looks like. Yeah, um, like I guess I'm tempted to do it with that one. Three pointers are okay. All right, so yeah, probably just go with the two as you suggest then. Um, It's like 30 bucks for like the small battle of it. I mean, yeah, up here. Right, hold on. That one seems like you've come off. Yeah, off enough. Alright, yeah, definitely want to do some paint on there after or some gloss on it all right so now that's the backs so fronts now i and j again almost likely be it so we'll see yeah but i mean it's airbrush for what for the chrome Oh, the black chrome. Black chrome. Ah, yes, I think Stuart Simple also has a black chrome or eh, a black gold, actually, is what he's called it. But, um, what is it called again? Where did you? Uh, so, so black. Black 3.0, starting at 30 bucks for how much? So it's uh, 150 is 30 bucks. Interesting. So yeah, it's about the same, 30 bucks most places, but yeah, that's the idea. And at least the I've I've heard that one again. The, I have the theory behind it, but I haven't actually done it. I haven't picked up a Molotov. I've been wanting to, but wanted to pick up some Molotov uh, clear or not the clear, um, the Chrome to test it as well um, because there's a couple of things I'd love to see in Chrome too. Can't remember anything offhand that I'd want to do, but yeah, that's kind of an idea as well. Ooh, okay, so you're also gonna have the U there also. All right. One. Right. So.
Uh, again, I, I've mainly been looking at the Culture Hustle by Stuart Temple stuff, so, but yeah. I don't know, this, uh, the C1 Metalizer looks a little dull on that one that they're using there. Ah, it's buffing powder. Okay. Yeah. Again, another kind of approach that kind of kind of scares me as I keep calling it. Um, Kind of buffing it on is kind of I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel my hands shake enough trying to do this part of it. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to do the other. Probably in this size, the last ones of these. Okay. And of course, I did that one off a little off center. Based on base color. Oh. Okay. Actually, that purple is kind of, well, I don't know if that's the same color that I'd want to use, but again, for the Musha Gundam, there are a couple parts that are different colors um, that I might want to do that as well. Yeah, Musha also kind of got delayed. Some of the reason I wanted to do a whole bunch of paint stuff to it that I didn't feel I had the skills for yet. And so I haven't gotten around to doing it. But, um, yeah, now, I don't know. Well, I'll probably build it on stream um, and then do the paint off screen. Just because, again, I've got space now to do it outside. Um, although, I do have a portable, um, one of those portable airbrush uh, stations. Is that it? 1, 2, 40, 32, 23, 39. Okay, so I, J, and U. Let's do you first by itself. Where is you? There it goes. I mean, I want to do more paint effects. Um, I just haven't gotten around to doing them yet. Like I said, um, I was kind of trying to do most of my painting in an apartment, and so um, didn't want to do that. DIY color shift. I, that's another thing I also want to do. I want to try playing around with some color shifting stuff. Um, most of the, at least the rattle can stuff that I've seen, the, shim, the kind of 
the flakes are really big and you can see them. All right, so where do you go? All right, you are gonna go here. Kind of mad. Okay, I thought, oh, it's a SD Zion. Okay. Green to purple, it looks like. Mm. <laughs> so it's like mixing your own mica and paints and whatnot. Oh man, that's that's too advanced. That's stuff that, again, I'm a little kind of scared to kind of mess with too. Uh, I am J. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's really it for most of them. It's the it's the size of the kind of of what you're using of the um, kind of little glitter effect, which is again kind of part of the issue with a lot of the other ones that I've seen is that those kind of glitters are really big. Doesn't mess up too much. All right, on this side. Uh, all right, a little off again. to keep that in mind.
this. This one's pretty well placed, it looks like. A little off. Oh well. Good enough. Good enough for me. Alright. And what do we have here? Three. Three. Okay, how are you? Okay, you are attached that way. Alright, so then looks like that's it for the shoulders. Am I missing anything? There's a top view. There's a side view, but it uh, doesn't really have them. Okay, so yeah, that's it for the shoulders. So shoulders are done. And I'm only about 45 minutes in the stream. Drink time then. I know about the picnic spoons. Self-disclosure time. I think I've hit on something for me. It's the kind of uh, something that I just need to kind of work through for myself and maybe bring it up is helpful. It's what I keep telling all my clients. It's a wasteful thing. It's having grown up poor. And so the idea of, okay, I'm going to waste this to test this. And what if it doesn't come up right? I uh, hope I'm still coming through pretty well. Yeah, it looks like I am. So, um, I think that's what the issue has been. So, it's becoming more of a, you know, when I test them, I need to keep that in mind. Just I've been, which is again, part of the idea with doing the stream. Is kind of recognizing what my cognitive distortions are. I was trying to remember that word. Yeah, that is the distortion that's going on here. It's the kind of... Coming from that mindset of it's wasteful. I'm going to waste the time and waste the paint and waste all this money. As I look at the pile of Legos and pile of Gundams and kits and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I need to keep that in mind when I think about it. So, yes, I'll, I'll need to go and pick up some spoons and decide to get around to it. Um... Again, I don't know if I'll actually stream it. I might do it in here. I'll have to see if my um, if my portable kind of um, table fits in here. I might have to move some stuff. Definitely move some stuff around and see, figure out how to do that. If I do it. Because if not, then yeah, all of that testing will be um, off screen. And see how it turns out at the end. But yeah, alright. So, um, now that said... Let's go with arms. Right, so we'll start with, uh, yeah, we'll say your left arm, your right arm. Yeah, well, it has to be. The thumb is on this one. It is, but it's uh, again, it, it's the the kind of the mental part that I'm stuck on is on that paint, and that I'm wasting paint. You know, so that's the thing. Like I said, I recognize that this is a thought distortion I'm having that I need to work past. Okay, you come out here. There it goes. Right, so, back to paneling. these I'm just gonna do the outsides and maybe the insides yeah all right so I'm definitely gonna need to get the love right. 
dot. A bit of stream today was figuring out what my kind of distortions are about wastefulness and the part that I need to work past. So, I was talking yesterday about stuff that I've said in previous streams, and I think what I need to do is revive my YouTube channel, actually, well, actually make use of the YouTube channel, and kind of put up the old streams that I've recorded, um, I have them recorded on my computer, so just kind of upload them from there, just to have them as well. Just to have so people can kind of see the progress I've done because I can look at the videos anytime I want not that I actually do but I could and see how far I've come but yeah so you all can see how far I came <laughs> so yeah I'll probably do that um, probably upload those at some point details what are these triangles for even <laughs> Luckily, I, I don't have that too badly, um, because at least P-Bandai saves me by not putting up too many master grades. Um, again, I'm a bit of a snob in that respect, where most of what I've built have been master grades, and so I kind of stick to that, and so they don't, and then... A lot of the newer ones that P. Bandai puts up also are kind of, um, I don't know, they're, they're mainly based on the, um, on the on Build Fighter ones, or like the, the Build Fighter-esque series. What are you getting? <sighs> okay, let's see. I thought my build pile was bad. Oh, you've got the Dendrobium? I think that one's been my kind of white whale uh, dream wish one. Um, what is, that kid's like 20 years old now, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, no, I did have a the high grade Dendrobium. And what did I do with it? I think I still have it up. Might have put it away, actually. Uh, yeah, because I, I did have I had, did have the Dendrobium, but the giant one I wanted to get. Yeah, I think that's the one that I had, and I never could get the Nizel to actually stick together, and so I just kind of gave up and gave it the heave ho, as it were. I think I still have it in this box in storage somewhere. But yeah, that's where I am on that one. But yeah, that Dendrobium I've always kind of wanted. Uh, what 
else you got there? Yeah, like I said, most of my kits are high grades um, or master grades. So, yeah, the real grades, I had one bad experience. Well, not bad experience. It was just, again, uh, these are driving me crazy enough. I'm trying to put this many stickers on a real grade model. Wow. So you, you need to start streaming too and just start building them here this way. And that's what I've been, that's why I did this to get through them. Um, just so that the wife doesn't get too mad at me for having that pile, but she doesn't. She's, we're, she's a good partner in that respect. Yeah, it's just, it's for me. Like I said, I feel bad about having so many, so I just kind of want to get them out the way. All right, so let's see. On both sides, it looks like. Alright, I'm gonna have to move a lot of this stuff off so I can look at it closer. Because I'm getting old. I'll just do it this way too. I don't really want to fold the paper. Alright, so let's see. Yeah, that's 18 on all four sides, so front and back. Uh, okay, 62 and 61 on the other side. What are you? Oh, 68 across all four of them. Three and four. That looks like that one's also on both sides. Yeah, three and four, three and four. So most likely four and three on this side. I'll have to look at that. <laughs> See that that's my part. I haven't been building. I've been collecting them for twenty years. So my pile's not so bad. You're making me feel better. Thank you for this, actually. Um, but yeah, I kind of had that pile. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how old are your kids? My my kid's uh, five. Well, my eldest is five. And she's recently talked about it. It's like, you know, when I get older, you know, maybe me and my sister can build with you. So um, they'll probably rate through it. So far, she's mainly built a lot of the Pokemons. And uh, she did a p couple of the Mokars. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've mainly just buy, bought her the cute Pokemon. Um, so, yeah, she has here that I can see that she's built. Y'all Grammy, uh, Charizard, uh, Charmeleon, uh, and Dragonite, um, Jigglypuff, Owlet, Mimikyu, Pikachu, Eevee, and Gengar. Um, I might have to get her a couple of the Pitsy guys. Um, I did, I got her the Hello Kitty Gundam. Uh, and she built that one. Well, don't worry, I bought a couple for myself as well. Yeah, bought one extra one for myself, and I got the Hado, uh, Hello Kitty as well. So, 62, 61, both sides, okay. And then side view. Also, where'd that go? Is it you? Yeah, this is side view. Oh. Okay, there are a couple that I missed here on this one as well because I forgot to look at this. That's what that is. All right, so going back a bit on these. Also need 65, 33, and 34, uh, depending on which one's which. Is that supposed to be on the front, though? Uh, Show me. Yes, yes, panel lining. Thank you. I know about that. So now you're showing me. Okay. Yeah, you are not showing me. So I'll have to just pick one and make that the uh, 33 and 34. Yeah. 
fair. I mean, that's kind of why I've been doing this on weekends, this late at night as well, and why I called it late night blah. You know, right now it's just call it Gumpla, but that was the original idea. But I have logos that go in the corner here, down here, which way? Here, yeah. Um, for, you know, med sciencing, for crafting, for uh, Lego I just recently made as well, and for gaming. So that'll be, that's the idea there. So I need 65 for, ooh, and there's more of these guys. Okay, those guys are on the arm. Okay, good. So 65, 65, there it goes. days um, generally nine to five so I got a pretty easy in that respect but yeah I try to do this because this is when both the spore and the sporling are supposed to be asleep um, and then the wife since she goes into work early as well you know so it's my my me time I don't know. I've recently gotten into audiobooks. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about them personally yet. I mean, no, not the whole like books or books argument, um, but more on the. I feel like I get too distracted while I'm doing something else. Uh, no. Okay. No, I hear that one. Okay. And so I feel like I don't pay enough attention to the story. And so sometimes I feel like I might get lost on the story. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be supposed to be for this one, so thirty-three. There it goes. Is any what it looks like? Mine finds these are kind of. 
these do have the light on them um no these are cheap ones they're amazon did i have that screen shotted yeah okay these are the ones that are these um you know, again i went for the cheapest option so they are battery operated but again i hardly ever use the light okay so now that one's done for sure and so now you are on this side uh, nothing that says exclusively one or the other okay 68 15. oh so the hand does have it as well Were these 20? I think they were 25. Oh, 15 bucks. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, I think the problem with these is I'm still getting used to using magnifying. So it takes a second for my eyes to refocus through them. And then I try to do this to focus. And then yeah, I think last night or two nights ago, or last week, you know, last night I wound up having a bit of a headache because of it. So, 16. All right, going back and forth on the focus really throws me off. Okay, 16. Here it goes. that hand so 15 68 well, at least as far as there 15 and 68 15 is the lower one 15 I mean, for this, I don't know how useful would an endoscope actually be? Although I need to see if I can maybe get bigger magnification on this. Well, I don't know. I know it came with extras. That might have been the one to use for this instead of the overhead. So those go on this one too. Okay. That's it here. 
So yeah, we are here. Still this one. Okay. Sixty-eight. Okay, so no more case this Why is that one? Jew again, and then more rub-ons. Yeah, I mean. To avoid the auto zoom, at least for my overhead, I just turned off, just have it do a manual focus. Fair. I've got this on potato quality because I don't want it to be. Let me watch that one again. Better. Okay. Wow. That's that is really good. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, I get, I get kind of skewed out by Wi-Fi ones. Not skewed out, but again, because my router is in another room, and so the delay on that one kind of throws me off a bit. Probably would see if I can just run it on wired, but I don't even know if I have any more <laughs> USB plugs left. That's like I do have the three D printer. Um, again, that's in that's in the garage also. Right, so where do you go? Four seven.
screwed this one up again uh, ready to come off yeah screwed this one up there's another mistake no wonder it wasn't to find a file for that and find either a water slide decal kit or something to do that with. Are you the correct one? You're on the correct side. Yeah, okay. This one is. So then you're gonna go Yeah, this side. I think I did this once before as well. On another kit, um, which kit was that? I think that might have been with the Musha actually. I think I might have done that there as well. deal in there now uh, you're not attached too well though you rubbed off the pack yeah you know th that's the other thing that I'm trying to work on this like I said with the Nipako um, I screwed up on the right leg um, when I built it and kind of broke the piece so I just kind of rolling with it uh, I've got a friend who's in Japan right now who said he'd try to order the piece from them he's got a place that he can I think his dad lives out there so he was gonna have his dad kind of uh, use his address for the delivery place he's out there for about a month I think he said so should be enough time for the piece to come in and so we'll probably do it that way. So that one's done. Right, so now I need you again. Good enough for last time. Uh, 
uh, again, another kind of trick that I've heard in theory. Uh, I don't know if I'd actually, if I've actually tried it yet. Right. Uh, yeah, let's go City Pop Volume 2, Japanese City Pop Compilation, Butasagi Selection by uh, Butasagi. So we'll see how this one plays out. Oh, God damn it. Again? What the hell? How did these get flipped? How, how am I doing that? Oh, yeah, this is the right side. How? I mean, yeah, I mean, most of these are snap fits. How did I do that again? Yeah. How did I do that again? Uh, side for sure. How did that keep getting flipped over on me? right now no, just make sure it actually adheres properly how did I do that both times on the same side so, oh well. or it's not the same oh yeah the same piece the same one how how did I do that So, is it done for the shoulders now? Yes, okay. So, so that's at least that part. So, here we go. So, you are going to need 62 and 61.
yeah i am thank you uh thank you for joining thank you for commenting I am really messing with that progression because I've had the airbrush for a while um, and I did play that and play around with it. Um, I paint with that. I painted um, the bear guy, the original build. Um, what was it called? It wasn't build fighters. It was build something else. Um, the original one. So I did that. Um, but yeah, scribing is one thing that's been kind of catch my interest a bit uh, let's see but yeah I've got the paint markers paint markers or the gunpla markers was uh, was for the Musha Gundam Shin Musha yeah yeah although yeah I got into the airbrush game because a friend of mine just gifted me a compressor so I'm like alright may as well buy it um, but that's another kind of recent uh, toy that I'm thinking of picking up of a okay, what are you? 18. Maybe 18 up here on all both sides, yeah. The airbrush, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm using a master airbrush, so I'm not expecting a lot of stuff, I'm, I'm using it to practice playing with. Um, but I am kind of tempted to pick up a real airbrush, uh, soon ish. Um, yeah, either Iwata or what's the other brand? I think Iwata's on my head cause I was looking at one yesterday. Here, I gotta go right up here. Is that right? for them anyway so hmm. yeah I can imagine that being the main path front and then it looks like it's on all four okay so 68 so on all four anything else here okay yeah you're gonna have rub ons down here as well okay well let's finish this part two sixty one got that part okay um, I need the uh, 68s. <laughs> it took me a while to get around to building my master, my perfect grade. Uh, first one I got was the GPO one FB, and I sat on it as well for like seven years, I think. Um. Because it was very much a, I don't want to screw it up because it's Buku Bucks. Um, but yeah, that was the, that was my first perfect grade. And it was funny because it was a really good price at Anime Expo. What year was that? 07? I think, yeah, Anime Expo 07, um, 
It was in Long Beach. And, you know, saw the price. Texted a friend of mine about that price. And he's like, pick me up one as well. Or he, I think his he said, is like, if you're not getting it, get it for me. So that told me, really good price. So I wound up walking out of the dealer's hall with two of those. So it's, it's funny walking around with that giant, those giant boxes, one in each arm, kind of going out there. Of course, I had to borrow money from a friend to buy it that day. And so right afterwards, I went to drop it off because he lives in Torrance, dropped it off, got my money, paid my friend his money back. Um, SDs. I don't think I've built any SDs personally. Um... I think I was once given a Zazabi by a friend who had already built it. And so he was my kind of driving companion for a long time. And he was on the dashboard of my car. So what's next? Need So risk of one, I saw your post, um, I'm doing good. Thank you for kind of messaging. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, you know, just kind of shooting shit. Feel free to comment or feel free to lurk. I don't, uh, you know, don't expect you to entertain me. You know, uh, Lord Bob's been doing a pretty good job giving me some to riff off. And thank you for that as well, Lord Bob. another mistake <laughs> wait no are those oh no there we go h and g two of them. Alright, that's what I kind of throwing me off. Alright. How am I going to get these? I think I'll cut out just the middle ones right now. I'm going to leave the other two still attached. For when I do the other arm. Okay. 
Chelsea side. Two perfect grades I've got are actually no, I've got three. Two that I've built already. Um, I have the GPO one FB, and I've got the uh, the Zaku two green one. Yeah, green. the to build pile I've also got the um, the Astray red frame uh, in perfect grade um, picked it up when there was a Bandai pop-up shop in Tokyo put on by uh, anime jungle I went and picked it up there that was kind of a Christmas gift to myself two years ago now yeah that happened two years ago so yeah I think it's a base. You can look at it on the to build pile. Let me look at my. Uh, where's my to build pile? Uh, yeah, the base one. MBFPO2 red frame. little off but oh well it'll do good enough for union as they say good enough for military I'll say it's a military spec so yeah we'll do it that way so yeah uh, the red frame base um, perfect grade so yeah that's one that one still needs to be built um, but I've got everything yeah, I built the Perfect grade Zaku and the GPO one. Um, so the Zaku, you're probably gonna hate me here, Bob. I picked it up for fifty bucks. Let's use this all for you. Yeah, looks like it. So how much time I got? Twenty minutes. No, I think I'll stop here. Well, so I'll tell the story first. <laughs> that was exactly it. A um, friend of mine says a friend of his found it in his garage. Um, and yeah, it was a little water damaged. The box was like everything was still in the, in the bags. You know, so he kind of sends me a message and asks like, hey, you know what? Well, how much does it usually go for? So I kind of did the Google foo. It's like, hey, it usually goes for about this much. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. And he's like, okay. I'm like, I was half joking, but I couldn't run to him fast enough to give him that $50 because it's a perfect grade. So, yeah, I wound up doing that. Um, and then that's where kind of guilt kicked in because I already had the GPO one that I had. I think I had started building it. I'd done maybe the arms, I believe, one arm. And so guilt kind of kicked in. It's like, oh man, I've got two perfect grades. I've got the build, the pile building up. I need to build through these. 
So um, I kind of <laughs> yes, but again, this was this was a couple of years ago when I had that thought. So what I wound up doing is I went up to Fanime and I built the 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 um, the Zaku on the main concourse throughout the course of the of the con. Um, yeah, I did the whole kit at the con um except for the the guns the guns i finished later and then um afterwards after a couple of years after getting really kind of comfortable with it that was the first kit i actually um kind of top coated with a with a matte coat from spray can <laughs> funny story for you bob i wasted one whole like small bottle of the of the tamiya um, matte base on one arm. Yeah, that was my first time doing it, so I kind of overdid it. Um, and because yeah, you can kind of see where the extra drip marks because I overdid it. But yeah, that's my story of that one. All right, so like I said, 20 minutes. I'm not gonna bother starting on the next one. So today's progress, um, and um, Happy little accidents. Let's go with that. Let's go with um, with the um, what's his name? Bob Ross kind of approach. You know, happy little accidents of the kind of sticker, the robons for the shoulders. So I've got the whole right arm done. No, right? Yeah, yeah, the whole right arm done. And um, I've got the left shoulder armor done. I'll do the arm next week. Piece of freedom here, corner one. Oh God, the old Zeta. I have the master grade Zeta old, and that one falls apart. And I've heard horror stories of the Zeta Gundam in a perfect grade. Actually, that was another one. Another friend of mine got that from a friend who had bought it. I really wanted it, but my other friend was kind of closer to him at the time, and so he got it from him, and I think he put it up on eBay. I'm like, come on, it could have at least gone to a good home that would build it. Um, the other one that kind of scares me because of horror stories, the Wing Gundam Perfect Grade. Uh, another friend of mine had that, and he says like it kind of just broke on him. Uh, I think the... The hip gave out on it just from having it displayed. So if anyone's got the the wing on them, kind of keep an eye out on that. But yeah, that was the thing. Um, got Unicorn One. I recently I picked up the the light up uh, Unicorn One Master Grade um, again a couple of years ago at the Honda at the Bandai pop up shop. So yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the three perfect grades that I have. I might pick up more. Oh, you know what? I was kind of looking at that, and there aren't any more real perfect grades made or sold, really. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Yeah, real grades kind of. I don't know. They throw me off. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I mean, but I think you know the series. You know Gundam, so it's like you, you've got that. I've kind of gone into this as I like this mobile suit. I like the look of it. I'm going to build it. Um, and again, I'm a bit of a snob in that sense, so I kind of just go with the Master Grades. The O is one of those that I was like, I really want that one. As I said yesterday, I really wish they'd make the Yagadoga um, in Master Grade. I don't know if I want to get the Re 100 on that one. The, the more I did it on it, it's like, hey, by the time I finally decide to pull the trigger, it'll be long out of print anyway. So I don't know if I want to do that one. All right. So I think I'm going to call it today just because I don't want to rush through the hand. I don't want to get caught up in the middle of it. Um, so, yeah. Got the shoulder armor done, got the hand done, um, kind of finish up the other arm next Saturday. 
yeah, we'll see how my mouth feels. There it is, 30, 43 years of it. At least the benefit is some of those out of print now. So it'll be, like, that's the thing. What really got me into it, what got me buying my second and third kit was the HY2M heads the, with the light-up LED heads from way back in the days. But, so yes, um, yeah, I'll go into that one later. Previous um, videos I've talked about this. But thank you for joining me, Bob the Builder. Thank you for joining me. Uh, who else is on? Well, um, Risk Ava. Who else is on? Yeah, thank you guys for joining me on chat, uh, for kind of being on and watching me. Um, yeah, all right. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Have a good one.